Hi everyone, welcome back to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. Once again, this is your host Iggy and I want to thank you for coming back and taking a look at what I have to offer you today. Uh, these are three of my most favorite figures. Two are made by Sideshow Toys and one is made by DML or Dragon Models Limited. Uh, first up, I would like to talk about this Frenchman. He's uh, either 1915 or 1916. I'm going to guess he's probably 1916, although the Adrian helmet was introduced by the French in 1915, and they're the first ones during the Great War to offer protection for their um, soldiers' heads by using a metal helmet instead of a kepi or a soft cap or whatever. Uh, the English and the Germans followed suit in 1916. Uh, this figure, his belt broke. Um, he had originally he had a wire cutter tucked into his uh, belt there. And I'll show you that. And you can see here that one of the handles broke off. So I removed it. And when I did, I broke the buckle. So I bought a new belt online. It's one six scale belt. But even though it said in the uh, description that it was a brown, it's actually almost a black in appearance. I mean, if you really look closely at it, it's a very, very dark brown but it looks more black than brown, I think. So I'll have to paint that and then uh, replace his gear. For the French um, accoutrements and whatnot, they had two ammunition pouches in the front there and one in the back. And he's holding a 1905-07 Berthier rifle. I actually own one of those. And... Um, I took it to a firing range for live fire and um, I was given some ammunition that was probably 80 years old, <laughs> 90 years old, something like that. It was very old. Anyway, I pointed my rifle down range. I fired and nothing happened. So I lowered my rifle and the uh, guy in charge of the range that day was a, a fellow I know by the name of Lloyd. They also called him Dirty Pierre. He was a really cool guy, but he came running over and said, you point that rifle down range. And I said, why? And he said, point it down range. And I said, okay. So I did. And no sooner did I do that, the round fired. And it really shocked me. But uh, Lloyd explained to me that the round was cooking off in the chamber, that because the ammunition was so old, it didn't uh, function the way it was supposed to. Um, but he was pretty cool about it. He said, you know, you, uh, you, you always have to be extremely cautious when working with antique firearms. Um, and I learned my lesson. <laughs> I don't think I fired it again after that. <laughs> Maybe that's the lesson I learned. Anyway, this figure was manufactured by Sideshow Toys. And Sideshow Toys, they came out with, uh, I think it was called bayonets and barbed wire. And they came out with Germans and English and all sorts of figures. And they're all very well done. And the face sculpts are excellent. Can you see it? Wait, is my light on? Yeah, the light's on. Okay. Huh. You can see there, he, he's very well done. And I think this is a guy that was in the French World War I group I was in. So that's pretty cool. I, I wonder if he feels weird that he's got a one-sixth scale figure of himself. He might be kind of proud of that. I would be. That would be really awesome. I probably look more German than French, though, so I did that, too. Uh, World War One 
German reenacting. Uh, I did switch over to the French because uh, I like their uniforms too. Um, let's see. I wasn't going to do this video tonight, but at the last minute I decided to just jump in. And the reason why is I only did a very, very cursory preparation for this. And uh, I just kind of felt uncomfortable uh, presenting today because I don't feel ready. And uh, I had a lot of bad luck with this. Like I lost his rifle. I found it uh, three weeks after I started looking for it. And it was tucked into this guy's arms. And this rifle was loose. So I thought I lost that rifle when in reality it was tucked under his arm here and went straight down and I couldn't see it. It's very dark where I live. So let me see if I can give you an idea. Well, I have my light on, so you really can't tell how dark it is in here. I call this the cowboy kitchen. Yay. Um, but if you look, the detail in the hands is really excellent. Just a really well done figure. I really like it a lot. And this one here was made by Dragon Models, uh, or DML, if you will. And it's of a foot grenadier of the Imperial... Oh, I hiccup. Let me try that again. A foot grenadier of the Imperial Guard, circa 1812. And the detail in this is also very excellent. And the, the figure is very poseable. It has a ratcheted body. So in other words, it has gears inside of it. Actually, I've never seen the inside of one, but I've been told that there's like gears that that uh, are kind of like a ratchet system. And you can hear them clicking when you pose the figure, but it makes it highly posable. Now, this fella, he also has an excellent face sculpt, as you can see there. And underneath his hat here, he's wearing a wig. Can you see the wig? I had troubles getting his hat on, as you can see. <laughs> now, if I had done my research, I would have looked that up to tell you the name of it. It's not a bear skin. Um, well, it probably is made of bear skin, bear fur, but, um, I don't know what the French call it. And I would have looked that up for you, but because I was in a rush, I didn't do it. So I imagine I'm going to get some comments saying, that's not a hat. And I apologize to you in advance. Um, yeah, this is not fitting on there too well. It didn't fit on his head at all earlier, but what I did is I stuffed it with toilet paper and let it sit for a couple of weeks, and now I can get it on his head, whereas previously it would just start sliding up and then pop, fly off. But you know what, guys? There is an excellent book you can read about 1812 and the French invasion of Russia. And I got it here. It's called Moscow, 1812 by Adam Zamoyski. And I love this book. It, it was very exciting and suspenseful because you you're start yelling at the French, get out of there, get out of there. It's October, the weather's changing. And of course, it was a huge disaster for the French. The Russians uh, kept, nipping at their heels all the way out of Russia. And, and uh, Napoleon basically had his army destroyed. By the time they got Poland there, to Poland, there was not many of them left. Um, but anyway, check this book out. I, I really recommend it. It's a fun read. Also, if you're interested in... Uh, the Napoleonic period, I would suggest this book, Nelson's Trafalgar. And this was also very interesting. 
by Roy Atkins. He covers virtually everything about what sailors ate, uh, what life was like aboard the ships, not only um, the British ships, but also the Spanish and French ships too. And the, the details of the battle are very complete. And he, he gives an interesting story at the end about this woman who was on one of the ships during the battle. And she made a living afterwards by uh, talking about the battle. She'd give little speeches. You know, people used to do that years ago. They would, uh, they'd get a rent a hall and advertise and people would come and it was a form of entertainment. She would uh, present her story. And that's how she made her living. Now, this next figure is also Sideshow Toys. And this figure looks like about 1889. He's got a LaBelle rifle, which was introduced in 1881. The French Foreign Legion was formed in 1831. And they were not very well respected in the beginning. However, uh, there was a battle in France, in France, <laughs> uh, Iggy is not having a good night. There was a battle in Mexico, and there was a company of French Foreign Legions that was detailed to protect a supply train, and they got attacked by, I think, 400 Mexicans, and they uh, retreated to a, a uh, abandoned hacienda, and they withstood attack after attack. And at one point, the Mexicans had 4,000 men attacking something like 86 uh, French legionnaires, and they they resisted almost to the last man. I think four of them ended up surrendering. But uh, Captain Danju, uh, who had lost his hand, I think, in the Crimea, he uh, refused to surrender. And, of course, he was killed. And the hand was returned by a Mexican who found it some, some years later and became somewhat of a uh, holy relic to the French Foreign Legion. And their reputation was greatly enhanced after that battle because they uh, resisted almost to the last man. It was almost like the Alamo, except in the Alamo, of course, that the Mexicans killed all of them, uh, except for the slave and a couple of women, Jim Bowie's slave. And... Uh, Oh, I started rambling off there, didn't I? This figure is also very well done. And he's looking off to the side, as you can see there. He looks like a young Alec Baldwin or something. But he's got his, his pot sitting up there on the top of his uh, pack. And uh, it looks like a shelter half there. And he has all his gear. And I was reluctant to show you the back of these figures because everything collapses when I move it. But I want to show you this. There's his haversack, which during World War I looked just like that. And of course, there's his canteen, which is the same as the World War I. There's his bayonet, which appears to be like an epi bayonet, which they had during World War One. He's got a oil, uh, oil cloth backpack. There's his boiler. Now I had lost his hat, not his hat, his kepi, but um, the cover to it. Hey, oh God, what am I going to do without the cover? That's one of the most distinctive features of the French Foreign Legion. I searched, I searched, I searched, I couldn't find it. My final desperate act was to look through the trash. 
I went through all the trash and at the very bottom of the trash can, I found it. I couldn't believe it. I looked at it like, oh my God, I almost emptied the trash because it was full. But at any rate, there's a young Alec Baldwin. So these figures, I highly recommend. They are a little expensive because they're out of production. I wanted to show you his pack. And he's got a sword and a bayonet, a socket bayonet, so it would fit on the, oops, there it is on the front there. He's got his blanket, and the hat does not stay on. And his pack is a sort of a fuzzy material, and this feels like felt cloth. And you see the detail in his coat is very nice. It's a really nice figure. And he doesn't want to stay together. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, I am sorry for not remembering. I can't. For some reason, I'm blanking out. The problem is I read these books about uniforms and stuff like this one. I read 30 years ago and Iggy has somewhat of a problem. When I first read a book, I remember 10% of it. Then as time goes on, 6%, 4%, so on and so forth. It finally gets to the point that I, I remember maybe a quarter of 1% and that's it. And that's virtually true of every book. I have books that I've read several times and I, and if you started telling me about them, I'd go, well, that sounds good. I think I should read that. It's a really bad problem. In fact, it's so bad that I ha I sign my name at the cover of a book and then I sign it again at the very end so that I know that I read it because I'll go, I'll flip the pages and then I'll check. And, oh yeah, I read this already. So I have to be very careful, but it it's really irksome. There's some people that can read a book and and retain it. And I call those people geniuses. <laughs> and they always downplay it. People who have that ability, they go, so, well, I have a photographic memory and that's all. And I'm like, God, if only I had that, I could have gotten straight A's in school. At any rate, that's neither here nor there. All right, guys, that's it. I promise. Um, I'm going to put these into storage again, and uh, I'll try and bring out some more stuff. I still have five large tubs to go through and 15 large cardboard boxes filled with stuff to, to go over with you. So that's it for this time. I want to thank you for coming along. For those of you who've enlisted in the Iggy Army, thanks for getting Iggy with it again. And I'll see you on the Dusty Trail. And I'll meet you back at the ranch. You guys be good to each other. Get those figures out. You got to start collecting. We need to start a new renaissance. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but <laughs> I can only try. All right, guys. This is where I suddenly say bye. <laughs>